Good morning from Brookfield Zoo. My name is Glenn and I'm part of the Wild Encounters team and we are extremely happy today. We've been closed for the last year because of the pandemic, but today, April 1st, we are reopened and uh, I would like to do a virtual tour and show you some of the really outstanding and cool things we get got in store for you this summer. And it's not an April Fool's joke. It is for real. We are really open. <laughs> now our first stop, we're going to come over this way. And we're going to go see our goat yard. This is where the Nigerian dwarf goats live. There's about 22 of them. Um, the yard itself is not open to guests, but the feeding opportunity is. And we're going to take a walk over here and see how much fun that is. I can see all the goats are lined up. They're waiting for people to start giving them grain. Oh, we're going in the exit only, but we can do that, right? And we can do that, yes. Right. Nobody's here. Nobody's around us over. <laughs> Now these goats are all full grown. Um, they probably get between 25 and 40 pounds. Um, they have a one heck of a home here too. They got this nice outside area and they also have a heated barn. So during the winter, they're not out in the cold. They're out there staying nice and warm. How many goats do we have here, Glenn? There's 22 of them. Ooh. They're a lot of fun. And so people can come. And how much does it cost for the, for the goat food? Um, it's 50 cents. And the food they get, um, they only get so much per day. This is part of their regular diet. So we're open from 10 to 12 with the feeding or we'll close earlier if we run out. We don't give them more food than they, uh, they need. We have a nutrition staff here that develops the diets for every animal and we make sure they stay nice, nice and healthy. And I think we might have some guests coming up here that might want to feed the goats and that would be cool to see that. They're just sitting here waiting, that's so funny. They have learned this is the place to be. Oh my gosh. And when's the last time the goats uh, had visitors? It would have been um, oh, probably 12, 13 months ago. It's been wow. a long time and stuff. Wow. So we have a young guest here who's going to get a chance to feed the goats. It's like mom's buying the grain for him. Lucky goats, lucky kid. Want to take a walk over and see how they do? Yeah. This is really a wonderful opportunity for uh, children of all ages to interact and make connections with animals. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of goat lovers out there because of this experience. Mm -hmm. It's very popular. You having a good time today, bud? Are you having a good time? Yeah, yeah he's having a good time. <laughs> we got the seal of approval there. Excellent. All right, what's next? Well, well, let's take a walk have. over and see our llamas. And how many llamas do we have? We have two female llamas. We have Cinnamon and Lucy. Cinnamon is the white and brown spotted one right over there. And Lucy, I'm going to guess, is in her stall. But often when we come up here, if they see us, sometimes they'll get up and see if we have anything for them. Now, if you look at the fence, we actually have feeding ports here. So sometimes we can uh, invite people to help us feed. You can feed right through here and stuff. Um, the llamas come up all the time. They're very interested in us. Um, there's, I think a lot of people know that llamas spit, but our llamas don't. Llamas only spit if something is wrong and there's nothing wrong for them here. So they're always pretty good. They seem pretty chill today. They are. Now, probably sometime in mid-May, we will shear our llamas. They get really heavy coats. We like to try to keep them a little bit cooler in the summer and stuff. So um, that's about a two-day process to get that done. And they're really good about it. They've done it several times and stuff, and they just stand there and they get themselves a summer haircut. Now, is that something the guests can see when you shear the llamas? Um, typically, we do it early in the morning, okay. so they typically no. So they'll just come in one day and we'll have yeah, naked two. llamas. That's right. It'll be sheared. <laughs> All right. Yes. And I can see Lucy moving around in the background there. Oh, there she yeah, comes. There she is. There's Lucy. Now, they're a distant cousin to camels and alpacas. Oh. They're all in the same family. Do llamas make good pets? Um, people do keep them, um, and they do. If you, but the thing you have to have is a lot of room, and you have to have a barn for them and the proper diet and everything. But we interact directly with them all the time. They're very calm around us. They're, yeah, they're, they would be great to have if you had a space for them, mm -hmm. and it was okay for you to keep livestock where you live. They go for walks and things like that too, don't they? Yeah, we take them walks around the zoo. We take the reindeer, the llamas. A lot of our animals go out for walks. We got a crested porcupine we take out for a walk. So there's all kinds of animals out there. Oh, and here's a question. What do you do with the sheared wool? Sheared wool, um, we keep it and it's used for behavioral enrichment around a, a zoo. Different animal areas use it and stuff. 
We're always doing stuff trying to make the animal's environment more natural and more enriching. Well, there used to be a spinner over at the, um, back in the old children's zoo. Margaret. Correct? Yep. Yeah. Margaret Hindle. Yep. Here they come. Here comes the girls. Now they're suddenly very interested. They're like, what are you going to do with our sheared fur? Now, both these girls are full grown. Do you know what a baby llama is called? A baby llama? Yeah. A baby llama is called a cria, C-R-I-A. C-R-I-A. So there's some trivia you could use at the next party you're at and show everybody how smart you are. Mm. Do they eat brows? Yeah, they get brows. They get willow and maple brows. Um, we have a really good relationship with ComEd, and when they trim trees, they bring a lot of those branches and leaves to us, and we offer it to all the animals in the zoo. Uh -huh. What do you think is the llama's favorite food? Um, I think the fruits and veggies they get. Yeah. They really like that. They also get a grain diet that they're really, really happy with too. They like that. And then throughout the day they get um, hay. So they've always got food available to them. Ah, and about how long do they live? They can live uh, up to their mid twenties. Oh, it's pretty, it's pretty long. Yeah. All right, what, what else do we have? We gotta go see the reindeer. All right. No trip to the zoo would be complete without seeing the reindeer. <laughs> and how many reindeer do we have? We have six female reindeer. I gotta go the long way around. So we got quite a herd here. And I'm gonna show you something really cool about the reindeer when we get over there. This is, I think a lot of people know this, but if they don't, they're gonna learn something new today. Now reindeer are part of the deer family, like white-tailed deer, mule deer, moose, they're all in the deer family. They all grow antlers. But the deer we got around here in our forest preserves are white-tailed deer, and only the males grow antlers. But with reindeer, both male and female grow antlers. They have already shed theirs. They always shed their antlers every year. And if you look at the top of their head, you can see the buds where the new antlers are starting to grow. I always tell people to come to the zoo and pick out a reindeer and look at its uh, horns or its antlers that are coming in and come back in a week later and see how much they've already grown. They grow very quickly. Now, what's the difference between horns and antlers? Um, antlers grow every year and they're dropped and they shed. Horns are permanent. Ah. And the, uh, we use a lot of the antlers, again, for a behavioral enrichment for other animals in the zoo. If you've ever been to a pet shop, you see where they sell antler parts for your dogs to chew on them. Well, we use, use it for similar things here as well. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, how long do they live? Um, 12 to 15 years. Okay. Now, moose are actually part of the deer family too, and those great big antlers, they get those big paddles, uh -huh. those fall off every year and they grow a whole new set. Oh, wow. So do both male and female moose have antlers? Uh, just the males. Just the males. So the reindeer are pretty special, huh? Yeah, reindeer and caribou. Cool, and I see they all have harnesses on. Right. Um, or maybe not harnesses, what are those called? Halters. Halters. Oh. I'm going to start with, with an H. Okay, it's not even Monday. Um, so do they also get to go out? Yep, um, we take them for walks and wild encounters, and we also take them out in the park. Um, they're all um, halter trained, so they come up and we don't have to grab them. They just put their head in the halter. We secure it, and we put a lead on them, and we take them out for a walk. Um, we work very closely with all these animals and uh, part of the key to having a good relationship with animal is trust so they know that when we go in there something good's going to happen and stuff so they come up to us that's why the llamas came walking up and stuff ah. they, they knew something cool was going to happen and how do they shed their antlers um, basically the blood supply uh, seals off where the antlers at and it just drops off almost like a leaf coming off a tree and throughout our wild encounters we actually have antlers uh, secured to different areas where people can see them and they can touch them and get an idea of what they feel like. Oh, that's neat. I mean, how many people get to touch a reindeer antler? And that's right. That's a pretty cool experience. Um, what are all the reindeer's names? You know, off the top of my head, I don't know them all, I have to be honest. Yeah, neither do I. Yeah. Are any of them Santa's reindeer? Well, you know, that, I always get that question if they're Santa's reindeers, and I don't know for sure if they can do that and fly, but I'm not here 24-7, so I'm not sure what they do at night. <laughs> Um, hang on, I'm just scrolling a little bit, making sure I'm not skipping anybody's questions. Oh, nobody could see them during Holiday Magic last year, could they? No, um, this area was closed, so um, we took them out for a few events, but for oh, the most part, good. they were not out at all and stuff. So we're really looking forward to being reopened and getting some level of normalcy again. And also reminding people we still should be wearing masks and keeping our social distance. Mm -hmm. But it's really great to be open and you can hear kids behind me having a good time and everything. <laughs> and that's why we're here. Uh, about how much do they weigh? They can weigh, weigh anywhere with the females 
about 150 to almost 200 pounds. The males can be over 400 pounds. They get, they're, it's a pretty big animal. Mm -hmm. And I see they're all snacking here. What are their favorite foods? Um, they're actually a lot like the llamas. They get fruits and vegetables. They get a grain diet. And then throughout the day, they have their hay offered to them. And they get fed a couple times a day. We you know, uh, spread it out a little bit. And then out in the yard here, they'll chew on the mulch, and they'll grab leaves, whatever else falls in the yard. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we can see people kind of moving around there behind that fence. What's back there? That's our dinosaur exhibit, um, which is open right now. So that, it is, if you haven't seen it, you've got to come out and see it. And if you've seen it, come out and see it again. It's really cool and stuff. Life-size animatronic dinosaurs that move, and they, they make sounds and everything. So that's going to be here all summer long. What did the reindeer think about um, hearing dinosaurs roaring all day? They seem to completely ignore it. <laughs> I don't think they make an association with, at all with it. Oh, that's good. That's good. Should we move on? Let's move on. Who's next? We're going to go over and see the red panda. He is a fan favorite. And I'm not sure if he's outside. He has access to his inside area today, and I don't see him right now. Um, well, that's okay, but I see I see an antler right there. Yep, there's an antler in there for him and stuff. Um, this is really a great exhibit for him. Um, he's, he's got a whole heated and air-conditioned area, and he's got this outside area. Um, so he's got a lot of room to run around. And if you look at this big log here with the openings, that's actually an artificial log that was made here. In the summertime, we're able to pump air conditioning in there, so he has a really cool place to go to keep him nice and cool on very hot days. Wow, we have a very talented enrichment team here at the we zoo. We do. They do excellent work. They constructed this tr the big tree that's in here. And that whole tree is fake. Yes, that whole tree is fake. Or I should say manufactured. Manufactured, yep. That's really cool. And so what does, what does the red panda eat? Um, well, they get bamboo. You get some grain and vegetables too, but bamboo is their number one natural diet. It's interesting to think about them because you look at a red panda and they look soft and cuddly, but they actually have very formidable teeth and they need that for shearing the bamboo that they eat. Oh, wow. All right, well, since Leo's not out, let's move on. All right. Oh, there's a nice little statue of a red panda. What do you say we stop by and see the wallabies? Let's do that. I do enjoy the wallabies. Wallabies are good fun. Now this is their first time seeing people too, right? Right, first time in the year. So um, they're pretty laid back. Wallabies got a real good perspective on life. They don't get excited very often. No. Who's your friendliest wallaby? William. William. What makes him so uh, people friendly? Well, William is a uh, kind of a unique situation. When he was a joey in the pouch, his mother had to be on antibiotics because of a, a health issue she had, and she couldn't uh, um, raising him. And because of that, he's friendly with us. Oh, huh, great. Um, as guests come out here, something you're going to see this summer, we have three wallabies that have joeys in the pouch. What? And we actually saw a head pop out the other day. So there's going to be little bitty wallabies out here this year. Let's go take a closer look. Let's do it. Absolutely. That's and very I was, exciting. I was talking about browse before. They got a willow tree in here that they can reach and they can eat live willow. Oh, wow. Are those the wallabies right there? Those are two animal care specialists. <laughs> Hi. Hi, wallabies. And they're out here every day, right? right? So if you have any questions, you can ask them. This is probably one of the nicest wallaby yards around. They have a lot of room here. they got a lot of grass that they can graze on and stuff. They get a really good diet. Um, right now, they're, they have not come out yet this morning, but they do have full access outside. And we bring other animals out here in the summer. Um, we'll bring the cockatoo out. We'll bring a uh, African gray parrot. We have a sulcata tortoise that weighs almost 100 pounds that we bring out, let her walk around. Really nice enrichment area for the animals. We've got a nice one-way path here, I see. Yes. Good for good for some crowd control. Glenn, I see a wallaby right over there. There you go. There's one of them's out. There's another one here. There's two of them, I see. Three of them. Now, people are always asking me um, why they hang out against this particular fence. Yeah, the only thing I can offer up, and this is more of a warm weather answer, is there's more shade here. Yeah. And stuff. But um, you can see they, they look very comfortable. There's actually the whole bunch over there, too, and stuff. Ooh. The other nice thing about this yard is that the original trees from the previous children's zoo are still here. So in the summertime, there is a lot of shade offered by these uh, big sycamores. Oh, wow. And these trees are probably 70, 80 years old and stuff. And they're 
So uh, where in Children's Zoo would this be? This would have been just outside the old reindeer yard. And where we're standing over here would have been the old arena. So we're gonna come through here with the birds to bring them out to the old animals in action show back in the day, as they say. Yes, that's really cool. Now in our overhang area here, we actually have a video that uh, tracks the life of a uh, wallaby joey from the time it's about the size of a jelly bean until it comes out of the pouch. So you can see how small they are. Um, and they crawl after they're born, they crawl to the mother's pouch and they start nursing and they're usually in there for about six to eight months. All right, um, can people feed the wallabies? Um, we sometimes let people do it. The wallabies don't really engage at that level. They kind of stand off a little bit and stuff. But if somebody wants to come up, yeah, we can certainly try that. So what else do we have? We have the parakeet aviary, which is extraordinarily cool. I always do that too. I, do I can never time. remember which side is the one. Even though it's it marked. It says, it says pull. Yeah. And I'm always trying to do the one on the right. I'm glad you do it too. Yes. I don't feel quite so silly. It's like a tradition. Yeah. <laughs> I would also encourage people to come out this weekend. It's supposed to be very warm, it's supposed to have a very nice weekend. It'll be a great time to get out of the zoo and stretch your legs. All right, so the parakeets are open again now, right? They are. They have been they were closed last year too, so the you can go through the aviary and the feeding experience is also open. Oh, that's great. Feels like we're starting to get back to normal. Have the parakeets missed people? No, because keepers are in there all the time. Okay. Every single day they got people with them. Woo. So we got a couple of our staff in here. There's about 500 parakeets out right now. And the guests can purchase uh, seed sticks for $2 a piece, and they can actually feed the parakeets. And the parakeets just come down in swarms. As you can see, as we walk by them, they don't jump away or anything. They're pretty used to us. So how many, um, how many parakeets are out at once? We usually have between four and five hundred at any given time. Okay. Now when they fly, if you don't move, they won't hit you. They always go around you. And they fly in very large groups sometimes. And it's really cool to see the different colors as they move around. Uh-huh. We got somebody coming over here to visit us right now. And you can see some of them on a stick over there on a seed stick. This little parakeet is walking up to me. I don't have anything, my buddy. We don't have anything for you, bud. No, nothing. <laughs> uh, what time do you feed the parakeets? Um, they get fed, their food gets checked every hour. We actually have developed a computer program where we look at what they ate and then we base the next amount of food on that. So it changes throughout the day. Okay. And they're very noisy. Yeah, oh my they're, goodness. They're, they're talkers. They're going all the time. <laughs> now they're, they're native to Australia um, and they're also called budgies. Mm -hmm. Um. What types of, what, what do they eat? Uh, they got a, a, a two-part diet. They get something called crumble, which is a, a prepared, complete diet. Then they also get seeds. The seeds are on the stick, and they also get it with their uh, crumble. Okay. Which is your favorite parakeet, bud? Oh, uh, this one right here. That, yeah, that particular one? Yes, that's him. Okay. I like the blue ones. Blue ones, yeah. Yeah, good. the colors are wonderful, aren't they? Mm-hmm. And we do parakeet breeding here, and we get all kinds of different uh color types and everything it's, just, it's really amazing to see them really what prompts them to fly in a big flock uh safety okay. um it's almost like a uh, fish swimming in a school it's hard for a predator to pick out one it's, it's gotcha. visually confusing for them okay they do it for safety they're very social birds and can people buy seed sticks all day long or is there a particular time that they should come here uh it's all day long when we're open okay um is it the same group out every day? No, we rotate them. We got three shift doors there, and the birds get rotated in and out. They're trained to go in and out, in and off exhibit. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so nobody's gonna get too filled up with seed then. No. Okay. Uh. All right. All right. Once again, we are very glad to be open. We're really looking forward to seeing our guests and our friends coming back, spend some time with us. Enjoy the spring. Keep your mask on, and we'll see you at Brookfield Zoo.